This video is for Sasha. And of course it is for the rest of you as well, but Sasha asked for it. So what's the topic? I will show you how to use Google Workspace or Azure Active Directory as the identity providers for AWS SSO. If you haven't watched our video number two about AWS SSO yet, I highly recommend to do so before proceeding with this video. What to expect from this video? So this video is really demo driven. So I will show you how to use Google Workspace to log into your AWS accounts and how to use Azure Active Directory to log into your AWS accounts. And we do both with the help of AWS SSO, so the single sign-on service from AWS. And I will do a short recap about that service before we start. A major aspect of AWS single sign-on is that you can grant your engineers access to the AWS accounts in your organization. You can do so by using an internal user database, or which is even more interesting, you can use your existing identity providers like Google Workspace or Azure Active Directory. And in this video, I will show you how to configure SAML and also another protocol, which is called SCIM, to get that authentication integration up and running. Okay, let's start with configuring Identity Federation for AWS SSO with Google Workspace. Let's jump into the AWS Management Console to configure AWS SSO. I go to Settings and here you can see we are using the built-in user database right now for AWS SSO and I'd like to change that. I choose external identity provider here because that's the option for SAML integrations. And now there happens two things. I can download a metadata file with the information of the AWS side of the SAML integration. And then I need to jump over to the Google side of things and configure the SAML integration on their side as well. So I switch now to the Google admin interface for Google Workspace. And there you will find the category apps where we can configure SAML applications, which I will do now. And I create a new custom SAML application. Let's do that. Let's call it AWS. Continue. And what you can find here is now I can download uh, the metadata file from the Google SAML integration part. So I will do that. And uh, I then continue. And now we have to provide the information from AWS SSO. So unfortunately, there is no option here to load the data from the metadata file that we have downloaded it. So we need to copy it uh, from here, which is no problem as well. So there is the ACS URL. This is what we need here. And there's the uh, entity URL or issuer URL that we need to copy. And there is also the start URL, which is that one. This is the information and we have a signed response. That's something we can check. And we keep the defaults for the name ID. Basically, that means um, we will use the email address from Google Workspace from each user as the user identification um, for AWS SSO as well. Okay, that's it. Let's continue. I don't do any attribute mappings because that's not 100% uh, needed here. Okay, so that is the Google side of things. We have configured it here. So now back to AWS SSO. Remember, I've downloaded the metadata file from Google, which includes information about the certificates and so on. And I will load that from, from the files here. Okay, now it says I have to accept the change. And now I have configured um, Google Workspace as the SSO um, provider for AWS SSO. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, let's test it, right? So let's open the um, AWS SSO website. And it says 
service is not enabled for this user. What does that mean? So that means um, we need to double check two different things. So first of all, on Google side of things, it says off for everyone. So I haven't enabled the application for the users or the groups in my organization. So that's something I need to change. Um, and I want to uh, enable that for a certain part of the organization. You can have organizational units in Google Workspace as well. And I will now enable that for a few people within that organization. So I'm turning service status on for those. Okay, that is should be in effect now. So let's try again. So I'm using the user portal URL from SSO here. Let's see, it redirects me to Google. It does not work. I'm not allowed to log in. So what's now the problem? The problem now is that you need to create the users uh, twice. So we have the user created in Google Workspace, but we also need it in SSO because there is no synchronization happening of users and groups when we do um, identity federation with Google. Why? Because Google does not support it in combination with AWS SSO. They limit that feature with the sync to only uh, approved apps uh, in their uh, catalog. So that's a little bit of a bummer. So what we have to do is I have to add a user um, with the email address from the workspace. I have to add that manually. Okay, let's do that quickly. I'm adding that user. So now I have created the user with the same username or email address in SSO and AWS SSO as I have in Google Workspace. And um, let's now try again to log in. Yeah, now it, I've, I'm logged in. Uh, but it says you do not have any applications because that's now because the user inside of AWS SSO has no access has no access to AWS accounts and that's what we need to change. Um, so now let's go to AWS accounts and assign a user. So I'm granting myself access to my own AWS account now with administrator access, of course, because I'm the owner. That's Probably fine with that test account. Now, when I reload the page, um, the AWS account pops up here. So what we have done now is we have configured SAML for the Identity Federation from AWS SSO to Google Workspace. So now I can log into my AWS account and I'm authenticated with my Google username. So here I am in the Management Console. Next, I want to show you how to do the same thing, but now instead of using Google Workspace for Identity Federation, we're using Azure Active Directory. So let's jump to the AWS Management Console. Again, I'm going to Settings of SSO and we're changing the Identity Source. External Identity Provider, that's similar to what we have done for Google. I'm downloading the SAML metadata file. And now I switch to the Azure um, console. And there I have selected my Azure Active Directory already. So what's, uh, what do we need to do here? So we need to create um, a so-called enterprise application here. So let's do so. I'm going to um, Enterprise um, Applications. And then I click here, um, New Application. And we don't use any application from the gallery here, even though there is an AWS one here, but that's a different thing. Instead, we click on create your own application. We call it, let's say AWS SSO or just AWS maybe. And we select the integrate any other application you cannot find in the gallery. Okay, let's do so. This takes a little while. Okay, the enterprise application is ready to go. And what we need to do next is we need to configure single sign-on here. So I get to set up single sign-on. I'm choosing SAML, that's the protocol that we use here. 
And here we have a button that says upload metadata file. So that is the one that we downloaded from SSO recently. So let me do that. Let me quickly search that and uh, let me upload it. And the cool thing here it is it fills out all the information um, for us and we just have to click the save button here. That's really convenient. So next, what we have to do is we need to configure the AWS side of the th everything. Um, so I'm downloading the Federator, Federation Metadata XML from Azure. <laughs> so that's the other way around. And I'm uploading that into the AWS Management Console here. Do review, accept. And now we have configured um, Azure Act Active Directory with SAML as the identity source for AWS SSO. Okay, so again, this is not working out of the box. We need to first of all, go back to Azure Active Directory and assign the application to certain users or groups because otherwise no one can use that application here. Okay, let's go to users and groups, um, add users, none is selected here. I'm choosing a group, which is called AWS, select that and let me uh, assign them. Okay, so now we have a group attached to this enterprise application and those users are now allowed to use the application, which basically means to use AWS SSO. Okay, so remember with the demo with Google Workspace, we had the problem that the users and groups were not replicated from Google Workspace to AWS SSO automatically. With Azure AD, this is possible. So we don't need to create the users inside AWS SSO manually. That happens automatically. So let's um, configure that. So this is hidden under the category provisioning here. Provisioning method is automatic. So we want to do that automatically. So AWS SSO should get populated with users and groups from Azure Active Directory automatically. And we need a tenant URL and a secret token to do so. So go back to AWS SSO. Provisioning is manual here. So that means right now we have to create all the users from Azure Active Directory manually in SSO as well to get that working, but we want to enable automatic provisioning here. So now it shows me an endpoint URL for the, the protocol is called SCIM. So let's copy that. And uh, this is the tenant URL we need here and it shows an access token which we need to copy as well paste in here okay let's test the connection that works okay um then let's save this provisioning okay so now the provisioning is enabled and Ah, no, there's one special thing you need to turn it on. So provisioning status is off. We turn it on, save again, and now it is working. <laughs> so now what basically what Azure Active Directory is now doing is periodically it copies all the users and groups to AWS SSO. Um, so you can see it here. It already copied two users and one group because that's what I've... Um, um, <clears throat> this this was the, the group that I attached to the enterprise application here. So now let's jump back to AWS SSO. What we can find here now, when we hit reload, there are now two users in here. So this is me and Michael and also the group that I selected. So that now works out of the box and we don't need to configure anything in AWS SSO manually when a new user joins a group or something like that. And what we can do now is um, we can go to our AWS accounts and say um, assign users and assign the AWS group to our AWS account, for example, with administrator access, which means whenever you add a user to your Azure group, the AWS group, it automatically gets access to this AWS account with administrator access. That's really cool. 
Okay, so this is um, up and running and we should probably test if it's working. <laughs> so again, I'm going to the start page for AWS SSO. And yeah, I'm already logged in. So this was a little bit uh, fast, but I'm already logged in into my uh, Microsoft session. So I already see the AWS account here. So that works really seamlessly. I really like that. I hope you can use one of these examples to set up Identity Federation for AWS SSO for your own AWS accounts. If you have any questions, please go to community.cloudonout.io. You will find this video posted there already and you can easily add your questions and I'm happy to answer them all. See you next week. Bye.